guys, so today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up, wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of May. Now in May I read a total of 16 books, so I'm going to try and do this nice shortly and sweetly, but we'll just see how it goes because I don't want this video to be forever. So jumping straight into it, the first book I read was Say Anything by Sarah Dessen. Now I don't have this book as I borrowed it from the library, but it was basically from what I remember about a girl who was always in her brother's shadow and then one day her brother gets sent away I believe to prison or something and then it's just about her and her trying to find herself after her perfect brother leaves. It was okay. I'm not really a huge fan of Sarah Destin's writing and I think this is probably the last book that I'll pick up from her. I can definitely see why people enjoy her but for me her plots are really predictable and kind of the same and I'm just not really into them. I read it say anything a three out of five stars. After that I read Magnonia. I can't remember who it was by but you know it's the one with the feather on the cover. Again I borrowed it from the library so I don't have it here to show you. I rated the book a three out of five stars like say anything. I did however really enjoy it. It was a little bit weird and whimsical but I enjoyed it. It's about a girl who can't breathe properly and she's going to die and everyone around her knows it but it's also got this kind of fantasy element to it. I really can't say much more than that like without spoiling it. As I said it's a little bit strange and whimsical but I did enjoy it. I know that there's actually a sequel to it coming out which is strange because whilst it kind of ended slightly open-ended I could totally see like it just being a like standalone so I'm not sure if I'll pick up the sequel but I guess I'll see how I'm feeling. After that I read Cecilia Cecilia Ahern's Flawed, which is Cecilia Ahern's first YA novel. Cecilia Ahern is one of my favourite authors, so I was super excited to pick up this. Now, I am going to be doing a book review on this, but for the way, I really enjoyed this book. I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars. It is a dystopian, and at this point, I'm starting to get a little over dystopians, but I did really enjoy this one. It's about this girl named Celestia, and Celestia lives in this world where everyone has to be perfect. And Celestia herself is perfect. Now, in this world, if you are not perfect, you are burned and flawed. Depending on what you did wrong, you'll be burned and flawed in a number of different ways. And the flawed basically live a less privileged life than the perfect because they don't deserve that. But then one day Celestia comes across this situation and she doesn't know what to do but she just makes an impact of what she feels was right at the time. However, because of her choices that she makes, she might now be branded flawed for life. I found it a really interesting take on society today and what we see as flawed or not and it's also one that kind of messes with your morals like what's right or wrong and everything like that. If you like a book that's like morally or ethically questions society and everything like that then I really think that you would like this book. So yeah I read this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Elites by Natasha Niggin. I rated this book I think a 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't really enjoy this one. It's kind of like this dystopian fantasy novel I guess where there's a city New York Babel and it's like after the war and everything and all these cultures come together and our main character is a native Chinese woman but she's an elite which is like I guess one of the war people she's not really sure how but she became elite but elites really live good lives so she's not complaining but then one day her parents go missing and like she wants to find out what happens to them. I don't know I just didn't really enjoy this one and I think I'll be getting rid of it. After that I read The Door That Led to Nowhere by Sally Gardner. This is about a boy who finds a key with his name on it and then he finds a door and when he puts the key in the door he's transported back to early London and from there he has to kind of solve this murder mystery. I enjoyed this book. I read it a three out of five stars. Still think I'm gonna get rid of it though. I just don't think it's a book that I would reread. Then I read The Society of 13 by Cariff P. Jones. I read this book a two out of five stars. This is a middle grade and I think it was just a little bit too young for me to fully enjoy but it's about these two orphans who are hired by this man and this man has this book and they find out that this book is actually magical and stuff starts going down basically. It was okay I think if I was younger I probably would have enjoyed it more but as I said I'm a little bit too old for it now. Then I read the, probably the worst book that I read this month sorry but it is The End of the World as We Know It by Ivor Marie Palmer. I read this book a two out of five stars. I kind of want to read it a one star. I, don't, I just really didn't like this book. This book on premise sounds like a really fun book but in reality it's not it's full of plot holes plot twists very very convenient plot lines and really unlikable characters and they just make such stupid decisions that it just it angered me so much it's basically about this group of people who are very different from each other but they get invited to this party of this rich girl. They go to the party and she locks them in her basement as like a, a bullying prank because she dislikes them or for whatever reason. However she accidentally gets locked in the basement with them and then while they're locked in this basement the house explodes and aliens attack. Suddenly they find themselves fighting for survival as this they're like dealing with all these aliens and suddenly they're all best of friends again ignoring the fact that the girl like who was like a real 
bully to them and now like working with her like I don't, I don't know it's just as I said they make really stupid decisions I really didn't like it it sounded like it just it could be a really fun book but it wasn't and I just I didn't like this book at all then I read this is where the world ends by Amy Zhang I have a book review of this coming out shortly but it's basically about Janie and Micha who have been best friends but nobody really knows that they are best friends and they like it that way until one day something changes I read this book a three out of five stars and then I picked up my most favorite book of this month and probably the year oh my gosh this is definitely one of my new favorites and it was a court of mist and fury by Sarah J Mass this is a sequel to Akatar a Court of Thorns and Roses and oh my gosh it's just amazing I'm not gonna get into it because I've already done a book review slash book talk on it so you should totally go check that out but suffice to say I just I love this book so much like it had some flaws in it some flaws that I didn't really discuss in my book talk because I was still on a high from reading it but the reading experience of this book it was just amazing and I, I loved it after finishing A Court of Mist and Fury I was left lost I was in the biggest book hangover of my life and I'm never really like that after I finish a book but it hit me and all I wanted to do was reread A Court of Mist and Fury. So I decided I would but first I decided to reread A Court of Thorns and Roses, the first book, to kind of like see hints of what had happened in A Court of Mist and Fury and I just thought it'd be fun to compare the two. So I reread it, I really enjoyed this one, I read it at 5 out of 5 stars. I do really like this one, as I said I read it at 5 out of 5 stars, obviously I love it but somehow like A Court of Mist and Fury like should get like a 10 out of 5 stars. But it's really good and then so you'll guess what I read next. I I read A Court of Mist and Fury again. Again, obviously I read it at 5 out of 5 stars and then after I finished it, guess what? I was left again in the biggest book hangover of my life and do you know what I wanted to do? Can you guess what I wanted to do? I wanted to reread this baby. I didn't. I restrained myself because I was like no this is getting ridiculous you have other books that you can read. So I was wondering what is an easy read that I can get into and then I thought hey I have the selection series to finish so why don't I finish that so that's what I did so first off I read happily ever after by Kira Cass this is all of the selection short stories I did enjoy this book I read it a three out of five stars some short stories I enjoyed more than others which is generally the case when you come across this sort of thing and then I read the air and the crown I can't really tell you what these books are about because it will spoil the selection series a little bit I did really enjoy them I rated each of them a four out of five stars this series is just a really easy slow I don't want to say trashy but I do want to say guilty pleasure read of mine and they're just so easy to read and I just fly through them and they're just books that you can read and not think about. I actually have a full series review of the selection coming out so you should totally check that out when it is out. I'll also be doing a book talk on them too so you can check that out and see what I thought of the whole series as a whole. After that I picked up one book that I have been sitting on my shelf for so long and I finally picked it up and I'm so happy that I did and that is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Avon Lavender by Leslie Walton. Now I heard absolutely great things about this book and then I picked it up and then I kind of heard mixed things about this book but honestly myself I loved it. I rated it a 4 out of 5 stars and it was just beautiful but I can see why some people don't like it. It's very whimsical, slightly strange. It deals with I think it's called magic realism or something like that. It's got this slight kind of fantasy magic element to it but it is very strange it's basically about a girl who is born with feathers she's born of these wings and it follows her family's past and her future self now and maybe try and discover her life of why she got the wings and like what she's doing now as I said it's very strange and very whimsical the way it is written it's just absolutely beautiful I felt really connected to all the characters and I just I really enjoyed my time reading this this book is not for everyone but if you do like this book you'll probably end up loving it and I really really enjoyed this book it's currently like a four and a half for me but I definitely could see this becoming one of my favorite books of the year so these are the books that I read in the month of May I read a total of 16 books I totally could have read more that second rereading of A Court of Mist and Fury I took it really slow I just really wanted to savor every moment seeming I read A Court of Mist and Fury in like two days the first time so I read it over like the course of five days the second time because I just I just wanted to savor it I'm really happy with my reading month but I had some really average books towards the start of the month. Month ended on a high and I'm really happy about that. I definitely found some new favourite books of the year I think in here and some books dropped. It's alright. It wasn't a court of mist and fury so it's all good. Let me know what you read in the month of May and what was your favourite book for the month. I don't need it to say what my favourite book of the month is. Like you all know don't you? It's a quarter of Mist and Fury. Come on. And like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more book related videos. Me and I will see you next time. Okay. Bye.